hello everyone. Um, we are here uh, on the maintainers track, uh, learn about Thanos, and uh, yeah, some kind of introduction about Thanos. And we're super excited to be here in person finally. And uh, you know, it's our first really KubeCon after after COVID, so it's amazing to be here. And hopefully, there will be some interactive time where you can ask some questions because this is. Uh, yeah, we can have this uh, versus whatever we have in virtually uh, that wasn't so so possible. So today we'll learn about uh, Thanos, but we also learn about other projects in the ecosystem, open source projects that really are fulfilling the whole observability story. Because as we know, metrics are kind of the cheapest and the most reliable, you know, first observability signal where you have your instrumentation, you have your monitoring, maybe with Prometheus, maybe with Thanos, and then you end up having a kind of reliable and, and quick to use, uh, you know, alerting and debugging uh, platform. But it's not everything, right? There are amazing tools that you can combine with. Um, and we'll discuss, you know, what are the challenges there and what are the ways to mitigate those problems. But before that, short introduction. My name is Bartek Plotka, and I'm principal software engineer at Red Hat. I maintain many, many projects in open source, um, and the biggest one are Prometheus and Thanos, um, really mainly about Golang, and my passion towards Golang and open source kind of made me also um, create a book. And uh, this book is coming in December. It's called Efficient Go, um, and it's really about you know, performance and, and efficiency of Golang in a m very pragmatic way, and there's lots of <laughs> Yeah, I couldn't stop myself, but there's lots of observability there as well. And I have uh, Kemal with me. Hello, everyone. Uh, the name is Kemal. Uh, I'm also a maintainer of a couple of open source projects, not as many as Bartek, I guess. Uh, and recently, I joined Polar Signals. Uh, we are an observability company, and we are building continuous profiling products. And I, I, we have an open source offering called Parka. We're going to uh, actually demo uh, on it. Uh, also, we recently uh, open sourced another uh, part of our company, which is an Arctic DB. It's an open source database, columnar sto uh, storage, uh, specifically with for the observability signals. And we are looking for database engineers. So if you can go to our website, you can find the details. Uh, but today, we're going to start talking about Prometheus which everything actually start with. Prometheus is a monitoring system inspired by Borgmon, uh, which is a tool uh, created in Google. Uh, with the Prometheus, we are uh, providing a highly reliable, uh, easy to operate monitoring system. A lot of components uh, just included in a single binary, like alerting, like querying. Prometheus also has a query language, which is very flexible uh, for you to just like uh, monitor and create alerts. So, and that kind of brings us to Thanos, which uh, we may just say uh, distributed uh, Prometheus++. Plus Plus. Prometheus has certain problems, like it's just a single bi binary and you can only just vertically scale it. And when you, have, when you need highly uh, available system, you need some additional uh, facilities. That's where Thanos comes in. Uh, with Thanos, uh, we are providing highly available uh, horizontal scalable data uh, storage for Prometheus, basically. So Thanos is nearly five years old now, and we've been an incubating project uh, nearly three years, if I'm not mistaken. We recently crossed like 400 contributors, and uh, we have a lot of Slack users. So we are we have a, we are a really vibrant community, like. We always active and uh, we answer your questions. Uh, so if you want to reach out, like just join our Slack channel. And we just recently crossed the 10K stars on GitHub, which is the most important metric of all, as you all know. Uh, we have many, many adapters, many enterprise adapters. Like the people are using this in production and like with really, really highly scalable environments. Okay, uh, now let's see how we actually get from Prometheus to Thanos. In Prometheus, we have different components, and all these components uh, kind, of, kind of like living in the same binary. We do this because like with a single binary, with a single process, we can actually provide more reliable solutions, and it's easy to operate. Uh, like 
of course, there are some drawbacks, like you need to uh, install Prometheus closer to the, your workload. So for that, like for each component by, with Thanos, we created another dedicated component. Like for the query pieces, we, we have Thanos Querier. Uh, for scraping pieces, we have a sidecar where, where you can actually deploy near Prometheus. And for the rule engine, we have another thing called Thanos Ruler. So Thanos has different uh, deployment models. One of them is as this in described here. It's a sidecar deployment model. You can just put the, uh, put the sidecar module near your Prometheus's and you can have a global view of all the Prometheus's that you connect with that sidecar. Another uh, model is to have an object storage for like long-term retention. Uh, then we, with the help of the sidecar, we can ship all the blocks to the object store, which is like cheap to store, and then you can just query using another component called Thanos Store API Store, which we come to the API part. One last thing to mention: we also have a another component called Thanos Receiver, which gives you the ability to actually push your metrics directly to a, another storage. It depends on, depending on your like net, network topologies, you may find this useful rather than having a pool-based model. So how we actually do this, uh, thanks to the store API, which is a flexible API for us, each component kind of like exposes this API. And from the Thanos query perspective, uh, this is seamless, right? So when we check the store API, like Thanos ruler is a, uh, store API receiver, store itself, even sidecar itself. When we say the store API, like it's not just the metrics, but we have all other meta information that are available with that. We can get all the exemplars, for example, we can get the alert, we can get the uh, recording rules, like everything. So with the flexibility of the store API, we can just like interchange all these components. So uh, what we've been recently working on is a couple of improvements, mostly around like uh, performance improvements or kind of helping the community to use different solutions for their uh, like caching backends. For instance, if you prefer to use Redis, now you can actually add uh, Redis as your store cache backend. One other uh, cache backend we add is group cache, which is easier to operate. It's not an external dependency. You can just embed this into your Thanos components and you don't need anything, anything else. Uh, also, we recently we improved our like TLS support to 1.2 by default, uh, more security improvements. Uh, we've been, as I told you, working on uh, a lot of uh, performance improvements. One of them is gRPC query API. It's not just for the performance. Uh, we also uh, has a new model of querying, which is like push down querying, which is like we are getting the query and pushing down to the oldest store APIs and then collecting them back, kind of a MapReduce model. And it, it really helps us to improve stuff. Uh, somewhat similar to that, we recently introduced, this is not merged yet, but it's about to merge. Uh, this will help us to get the data from Store API a little bit faster. And as we talk uh, about pushdown queries, we just added some aggregation support for the query pushdown. Uh, the PR is already there, like we keep uh, working on that. But if you want to know about uh, more, know more about query pushdown, we have another talk coming. I guess it's in two hours, right? Yeah. Uh, from Philip, he will be going through all the recent changes about the query pushdown API. And the big news, okay, we finally met in person and we had our dev summit and we decided that our APIs are pretty stable. We haven't changed them for the couple yes. of even years, mm -hmm. right? So it's time to actually bump the Thanos to version one. For that, we have a couple of agenda items that we need to take care of, but we targeted the next KubeCon for the Thanos 1.0, basically. This doesn't change anything for you, I guess. Like, the APIs are pretty stable. We just need to clean a couple of flags, maybe, so that we won't like be supporting uh, some experiments. Anywhere, anything else to add in here? Yeah, it's great. Yeah, cool. And it's demo time, actually. Let's see Thanos in action. <laughs>
Yeah, let's do that. So we are working on this very, very hard and like Lishi before the talk as well. So let's see what happens. I will start by just starting the demo setup and I will then explain that demo setup to you. Um, so it's written in kind of Golang unit test uh, and uh, I will talk about that may maybe later, but I would start and meantime, it starts pretty quickly, but then metrics have to propagate. So it takes some time. I will discuss um, the actual setup. So the setup is following. I wanted to kind of mimic like, uh, you know, the proper production setup that you usually would have with Thanos. Uh, this is one of many options. Uh, and as Kamal mentioned, there are kind of, ooh, you see, it's starting. Uh, there are um, kind of three major deployment models of Thanos. So this is the most complex one that you probably you should do at the, at the end of your journey with Thanos, like the, the ultimate SaaS kind of uh, metrics. Um, but at the end, um, how it works, we have, we, I'm, I kind of, Im, let's imagine we have like customer cluster, so a separate cluster under, you know, different network where we run our applications. So I have demo applications, it's like simple ping server, it's like a simple, you know, slash ping HTTP, and I have pingers, so uh, kind of clients that are spamming those pings uh, within the ping, ping web server. And I want to observe my ping and make sure it's healthy and I can debug that and I have full observability. So I kind of install lots of goodies into that. So first, I instrumented that with metrics and I, I use Grafana agent, but I, I could use Prometheus as well. Um, and Grafana agent, uh, or Prometheus in this case as well, actually Grafana agent is embedding Prometheus. Uh, you know, we scrape metrics from this uh, ping application and then remote write, so kind of export to a separate cluster and we call it observatorium because why not? It's kind of like, uh, you know, imagine you have like observability centralized cluster and it's very simple setup at the end. Maybe, you know, it's a comp the most complex deployment, but it's still kind of simple. You only have three microservices, query, receiver, and ruler from Thanos project. All of them are one binary with like different flags. Um, so you run that as your backend and as your UI for querying as well than alerting. Now you, so we, we, we have metrics propagated into to our observatory. That's great. But we want more. Let's grab, oh, I, I kind of missing the, the, the line, but essentially Grafana agent is then tailing the logs from the file from this ping server and then sending again to Grafana Loki, which is another backend, but for logs. Uh, they call it Prometheus, but for logs essentially. And we store logs there again in our centralized cluster, imagine. And then we do similar with tracing and we use uh, kind of push API from OTLP, so open telemetry protocol, and that pushes to Grafana agent and then agent is able to push that using some Jager format to Jager, which is right now the simplest Jager in memory uh, storage. And again, Jager allows us to store traces and query them and, and, and you know, all of those three systems has some UI to use. Uh, but we, <laughs> we want to make it even more nicer, so we want to add continuous profiling, right? So what it does is that we install some agent on the customer side, uh, and this is Parka, developed by Polar Signals. It's open source as well, all of this is open source, and it uh, scrapes a special PProf endpoint, so instrumentation for profile, Golang has it, Java has it, um, but there are also there are other ways how you can grab those continuous profiles. So with this, we have really, really nice um, overview of what's happening. We have all the magic observability signals, metrics, logs, tracing, and continuous profiling. But as you can imagine, this gets a little bit complex to use, not only, you know, operate. And hopefully, you know, I mean, industry is moving to making it easy to operate and scale and use. But what about usage? What about user? Imagine I have to go to Thanos UI, Rafana UI, Jager UI and then Parka UI, it's just kind of like scary and you have to learn three different kind of search for different search engines and, uh, and APIs. It's kind of crazy. So I was thinking it's actually not that um, hard to implement a microservice that will understand those APIs for you and will expose it in a very simple uh, correlation mechanism. So. We wrote, you know, a very complex correlator AI that will essentially correlate um, and hopefully will help us in our journey. And I'm joking, of course, I, I wrote that two days ago. It's very simple service and it's very YOLO, but the point of this demo is to make sure, is to show you how easy it is to implement with 100 lines of codes 
like amazingly useful correlation mechanism that ideally we can bring up to all those UIs someday maybe if we embed it in the browser so maybe it's easy to have maybe you know at some point we can work with those projects like Thanos, Loki and Jagger uh, and any other to really embed this this kind of service in in uh, in our browser so we can kind of show you way around okay but enough talking let's see if this will work so the situation is following right we have some, let me uh, quickly rearrange things. So we start with Thanos UI and Thanos alerting UI. So you imagine we have our pinger, uh, ping service alert, we are happy, la 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 la, nice, we can you know, go to conference and, and just enjoy our time. Unfortunately, we are on call and you know, imagine you get paged. And you get paged on your phone, you check and there is a link to maybe Thanos UI that contains an alert. And we can see there are too many errors. Well, this is what I can, I can read from it, right? And there is some complex query to make that, to, to, to express that. But what I do next, um, hopefully there is some run book, there is some links that maybe to dashboard or something. Uh, but what if you don't have those? What if you are in the middle of the night suddenly and you really want to fix it very, very quickly? So maybe you go to Thanos UI and what do you do? What do I query? Maybe I can just search something. Okay, there are some requests, HTTP, sure. Uh, but uh, there might be more services that I'm observing. How do I get to the information I really want, right? I have to understand PromQL. I have to really understand what is happening. So maybe there are things we can improve here. Now let's go to our logging signal. And I open, you know, just main Grafana, you know, kind of UI. And if you are familiar with this, you can, you know, you can do a lot here, but you have to think, and like in the moment on the, you know, uncle kind of page and incident situation, it's really hard to kind of find, you know, find the correct data source and really try to, you know, maybe, I don't know, find something, right? It's kind of hard. And the same with tracing. You go to tracing and say, oh, I want to, what should I, what should I do? What tag I should use? Like, how do I find my, not only service, that is instrumented with those traces, but also, you know, the exact situation, exact error that is happening, right? And again, because we have four things, there's also Parka, and, you know, how do you use those, this, you know, kind of query filtering mechanism of Parka? So at the end, it's kind of crazy. So this is where we thought it's kind of simple to write automation that will understand those things. And you know, again, take it as an example. It's, it's just, you know, I'm not front-end developer, so I, I didn't build a nice UI for that. But think about it. What I have is like a simple UI, or like simple input. So I copy the alert name, pick service too many errors. I just put into that. So pick service too many errors. I want to use exemplars, and I will tell you what that later on. And I click correlate, and voila, it actually gave me uh, a lot of links, useful links I can use. So let's go through this page. And, you know, imagine it is like embedded in your browser so it's easy to use. But correlation, this AI, found that there is an alert. It's firing for a certain service with certain instance, with certain job. And what's more amazing is that it found out that this alert is actually using HTTP request total counter that is also instrumented with exemplars. And exemplars is essentially a way to provide an example request ID that contributed to those errors. So we know that there is a certain request that caused, among many, that caused this alert to fire. And we put that into exam exemplar, right? And maybe thousand, but we, we, only, we only want one example. So you can see that this my, my service queried actually Thanos and make like two different API calls and gather that there is a request ID that is correlated to those errors that caused alerts to fire. So it constructed useful you know, links for us. So for example, we can go and check uh, you know, exactly the, the query behind the alert here. So we can see, confirm, yeah, error rate is you know, above 65%, right? And, and, you know, even like what are the actual error rate uh, requests per second? It's, it's slower than, than it's, it's less than one per second. Um, but, you know, in this actual case, it's not very useful. So maybe let's try a different correlation. Maybe, you know, as um, 
I think it was amazing talk on Prometheus Day from Bjorn around anomaly detection, and he mentioned that you know it's 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 useful to have those theories that you want to check, but only a few of those. So we click, we click from theories uh, that what can go wrong, what, what could go wrong, and, and you know, where is the best place to look for the reason why things are failing. So let's go to the um, logging. Maybe logging um, you know, is useful. You can see I, don't need, I didn't need to craft this query. I have, and you, know, you don't need to learn LogQL. I have already kind of automation crafted me this query and found that for this request, we have only two log lines, unfortunately, for starting the ping and finishing the ping. Uh, is there anything useful we can get from that? Unfortunately, there is not even any, is there error? Yeah, I don't think it's error. Well, we are unlucky here. At this time, logging was not very helpful. Uh, let's try tracing. So um, with tracing, let's go that. Correlation, go where, you know, kind of directed us to tracing. You can see that immediately they gave us, you know, uh, this correlator give, gave us the trace view, right? Which, uh, which exactly is a response for this request that failed and contributed to this alert. So it's very, very useful information. You can see it's an error and, you know, the whole request took some time, but there is this evaluate ping function which took one hand, over one, hand, one second and we can see it turned error because decided to not return success. Okay, that was not helpful. But at least we know a function, so we already knew something, right? So we are unlucky this time, but who knows? Maybe on next alert that, that information would be helpful. So what we can do, let's go to the last link, uh, which is um, Parka, and let's check if continuous profiling will tell us anything. And you can see you know, our correlator crafted a, 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 a query that checks the exact job and profiling, you know, in the exact moment when this, you know, kind of example exemplar was happening and uh, already told us a lot. So we are actually spending a lot of CPU time. Let's see. So apparently we spent five minutes in total across all the pings on this nasty bug function, right? And if you go to my code and search for this, actually, let me copy. What happened here? So, yeah, this is my pink code. Let's search. Oh, yeah, I have this nasty ping that just does, you know, nothing and burns CPU. Exactly this. So, yeah, I found error, just delete it, and now it should work, right? So this is kind of the story we wanted to show. Should we show experimental feature if this is actually working? So let's try. So we have another link here. And this is like, uh, so what you have seen is totally doable right now with like master, master or main of, of all those projects, like latest uh, releases. But Parka like, is, is going crazy with features. And uh, one thing which is amazing is that we can use exemplars, so trace ID. So usually we have profiling that is across all the things that were happening in the binary. But trace ID, or like we can label, um, you can filter out things by certain labels. And we could filter out essentially only CPU time spent for this request. And uh, it's an experimental and it was not working before. Whoa, it works. <laughs> All right, so. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh my God, yeah. And uh, you can see that Correlator crafted a, a query which directly asked for request ID. And you can see that just this request took exactly one second of CPU time. This is incredible because if you have a large binary that has lo do lots of things and maybe it does a, a lot of other CPU time work, you wouldn't see the exact problem, uh, performance problem in this request. So uh, this is, yeah, it's amazing. So congratulations to Polar Signal for, um, you know, really, yeah, hacking <laughs> profiles. It's, yeah. it's amazing. All right. So um, that's for the demo side. I want to show you one more important thing. So how we even constructed this exemplar and those kind of few, um, all those observability signals together. The key of, of how we were able to correlate those stuff is in this function, it's like a middleware. So it's not like very visible in the code because it's hidden in this helper that wraps your HTTP handler for ping. And it's in, in the Go, but it will look very similar in other languages. So as you can see, we create a registry, Prometheus registry from uh, our official client Golang library, we create a metric for HTTP request total. 
this work, yeah? Um, then we uh, grab exemplar if there is any, so well, grab trace ID really, if from tracing library that I wrote, that wraps open telemetry library by the way, um, and I wrote myself because, uh, I wrote another one because it's kind of like open telemetry library was, was too complex to kind of use for normal humans, so I, or I wrote like opinionated smaller packages, but anyway, so if it's sampled, if it have trace ID, it will return trace ID that is then consumed into official instrumentation. Uh, so this trace ID is connected to our HTTP request total metric, which is kind of like logically and semantically making sense, right? And of course, we have to wrap with some tracing library to have this trace ID and all of it, right? So I will not explain everything, but you can grab my slides and you can reproduce everything. It's like in our uh, BW Plotka correlator repository. You can run a unit test and it will spin all those things. And to achieve this, I use this uh, one library you can see here, efficient go end to end. And uh, if you want to learn more, join our talk today on you know, uh, 4 p.m. 50-50, and there are Jessica Machi here who will be discussing you know, just this end-to-end -end framework because it's running containers on your local laptop. So you can totally test on production many, many things, and we use that to test from, uh, Thanos on every, every PR. So we spin up the whole Thanos deployment complex systems, and it's ultra fast, so I recommend checking that. And we also want to mention that we do mentorship, so if you have any new joiners into op, you know, open source, we are, um, we are there to help you. And you can also watch a video from Lucas uh, to learn more. And with that, I would like to thank you. And uh, yeah. I guess before the questions, one disclaimer, like you've seen that we added exemplars to the alerts, which is a feature that we are we're gonna add in client Golang pretty soon, next version. Same goes for Parka as well. The trace ID queries will be included in the next release. So this is very bleeding edge demo. And we have, we have time for questions actually, I think five minutes or more. So any questions that you want to shout out, I guess, because, or maybe you want to help? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Let's just wait, yeah. Hello, okay. Yeah, so you had to, well, you, you built this on, on what appears to be not very deep tweaks to the entire ecosystem, right? Changing a few things on each client and maybe, how far are we from this being the default? Every, every one of these products out of the box having being configured so that you could just plug in this correlator and is this an initiative something that is that is happening in, in is it a conversation that's happening there are, there are definitely conversations but it's really like organically growing I think we are there because we already you know build stable uh, metric packages that are metric libraries for different uh, languages with exemplars now we have to find out you know how to work with other li you know tracing libraries and logging libraries to, to create those, uh, let's say, auto-instrumentations uh, for maybe your framework of preference. And, you know, I think you can discuss about yeah. even, even, you know, more magic auto-instrumentation in this space. Yeah. So the most important thing, I guess, here is the labels, right? All these tools are based on the label models. That's why we, how we actually correlate those. There are a couple of initiatives to just, like, ease up the correlation, like open telemetry, which, but you need to do that in the instrumentation size, right? So it's kind of like tightly coupled. We want to do this in a more loosely coupled way, which by just using labels. So uh, Bartek and his team is like working on a project called Observatorium, which, which is also an open source project. Uh, one aspect of that we are trying to correlate in that project as well, like so without any yeah. instrumentation. So you should have like one package you install and you have all this, you know, uh, right side thing, uh, you know, by, by just one click of the button. That's the kind of idea. So we have this part done. Um, and then, you know, we have to correlate all those kind of um, efforts within different libraries as well to have instrumentation part. But I, I think what you, I yeah. wanted you to say. I will, I will come to that. For <laughs> this still with the people of labels, you need to a little bit instrumentation, right? You need to grab that tracing idea and put that as in label. What we are also working on with the Parka, there is an agent, which is an eBPF based agent and collect those metrics by just using eBPF, which is zero instrumentation. 
what we plan to add on top of that, some type of like a uh, labeler, you may said, say, uh, which will just discover the metadata and just attach those to those auto-instrumented lab labels. So it will be some, somewhat auto-magical. At least that's what we plan. But even, Let's even see. without labels, I think it will work. But the idea is that there is a BPF, you know, kind of um, observability direction going on as well to kind of have all logging metrics and tracing and profiling just by eBPF. So hopefully we'll see more improvements on this side. But really, there is nothing better than instrumenting your own application, <laughs> owning the code. I trust you. I mean, trust me, because uh, we, 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 we have amazing observability because we, uh, yeah, we, we kind of kind of added those statements. And this is like called open box observability. There's nothing better than that. But of course, if you don't have this power, you have to, we have to work on, on those auto instrumentation tooling. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, maybe last question. Oh yeah, very close by, so that's good. <laughs> Hello, uh, great talk, thanks. Uh, I was at the um, Open Telemetry community yeah. uh, meeting, and they were talking about adding profiling into one of the signals of Open Telemetry. Uh, has anyone got in touch with you this. to discuss this? Because. I mean, that would be awesome because then we can have the trace ID and span ID into everything and then we have lot logs, metrics and profiling all together. Yeah, it's kind of the holy grail. Everyone, everybody wants to go there, right? But those discussions are, are very early stage. Uh, but we'll see. We probably be, will be part of that discussion. We are building this open source tool. So uh, there is tag observability, there's open telemetry uh, subgroups. So yeah. Uh, just be part of those discussions yourself as well if you want to see any feature that you want to add, be added. But yeah, we are just like scratching the surface, surface of this profiling area. Awesome, thank you. It's worth to mention that still, even with open telemetry having all the signals in the world, you have to run multiple agents. Yes. Because a, dip, a more scalable solution, like if no, normal production, you won't, what wouldn't survive one binary having all the signals. You have to have different, maybe open telemetry, for example, uh, just different instances of open telemetry, but still you have to scale those across metrics and traces and, and profiles and probably logging at some point. But um, th those are like different characteristic of performance of collecting those. So you have to manage that in practice. You have to manage that in separation. So maybe it's one binary is helping. I, I'm open telemetry is doing an amazing job on, on kind of getting APIs. To, to work together, so that's amazing. But the agent side, you have to still probably running the separate agents. So uh, that's that's kind of the the, the, the unfortunate uh, reality. Yeah. But thank you. Okay. So last question, maybe. Anyone? I will check questions on virtual side. I have that opened. Oh, we have question. No, it was around like a uh, kind of audio. Okay, so thank you very much for joining. Thanks.